In this demonstration, we're going to be discussing calculating the current and the voltage in a DC combination circuit. And that will become evident as to why we're going to need both of them. So first of all, this is the circuit with one equivalent resistor in series with the circuit, a combination of all three resistors, R1, R2, and R3, total opposition to current flow of 22 ohms. And we have a source voltage of 12 volts. So we need to find our total current flow. And in order to do that, we need to make sure that we're using our totals. So the I total, or the total current flow in the circuit, is equal to the total voltage divided by the total opposition, the current flow, or the total resistance. Put the values in there. 12 volts divided by 22 ohms of resistance will give us a total current flow in this circuit of 0.54 amps. So now what we need to do is take this information, because there's nothing else we can do with this circuit right now, is to take the 0.54 amps and transfer it up to the next circuit. So in this circuit, we have separated out R23 from R1, and this is a simple series circuit. You have 0.54 amps of current flow at R1, and we also have 0.54 amps of current flow at R23. Applying series rules, current is unchanging, and it is our reference. The thing that we do need to calculate in this circuit in order to proceed to the last drawing is that we're going to have to find out what the voltage drop is on R1 and what that leaves us for R2. So the voltage drop on R1 is going to be the current flow times the value of R1, or 0.54 amps of current flow times 10 ohms of resistance will get us a voltage drop on R1 of 5.4 volts. And one of the rules from the series calculations is, is that the sum of the voltage drops on all components in a series circuit have to equal the source. So we could simply calculate this for the remaining voltage at R2 by taking the source voltage minus the voltage drop at R1, and that will get us the remainder for the voltage that is going to go up to R23, or 12 volts minus 5.4 volts dropped on R1 is going to be equal to 6.6 .6 volts. Now we can take these figures and go up to the last drawing. And here, we have 0.54 amps of current flow on R1, and we have a voltage drop of 5.4 volts on R1. Now, this last portion, we have resistors R2 and R3 separated back out, and now we have to shift back to parallel rules. And for a parallel circuit, voltage is unchanging. And so the voltage at R2 will be the same at R3. So we have 6.6 .6 volts at R2, and we also have 6.6 .6 volts at R3. And what we need to figure out for the parallel portion is the division of current on R2 and R3. So the current at R2 if we're just applying Ohm's law again, is going to be the voltage divided by the value of R2, making sure to use the correct numbers, not the source voltage, but the voltage that's entering this branch. The 6.6 .6 volts divided by 
the 20 ohms of resistance is going to be equal to the current on R2, which is 0.33 amps. So we can repeat that step again. So the current for R3 is going to be the voltage coming into the parallel branch divided by the value of the resistor at R3 or 6.6 .6 volts divided by 30 ohms of resistance. And that number happens to be 0.22 amps. So we have 0.22 amps of current flow at R3, 0.33 amps of current flow at R2, and both R2 and R3 have 6.6 .6 volts and a resistance value of 20 ohms for R2, 30 ohms for R3, and the total current of 0.54 amps going through R1, voltage drop of 5.4 volts, and just um, we could prove um, the other thing about the current flow is that the total current of 0.54 amps um, in a parallel portion, the sum of the divisions of current in, the, in all the parallel branches have to equal the total current. And if you were to add together the 0.33 and the 0.22, you would end up with the total current.